So the I, here I used word cloud for the um, long, uh, well, long abstract version of uh, paper in preparation, um, just to highlight uh, the main topics uh, of this project. So uh, it is focused on protein folding, uh, but uh, visualization is one of the keys. Uh, interactive, so we, will, we heard before a comment about a lot of visualizations are static still these days. Um, so we are moving definitely in the area of uh, interactions. Uh, multimedia, we use uh, images, video, sound, uh, eventually uh, moving in depth and touch, etc. I'll talk more about that later. Uh, there's a tension in this project between uh, 2D and 3D in particular. Uh, I think that will become clearer later. So it is a multidisciplinary project. Uh, at Goldsmith, we are in the computing department. Uh, Goldsmith itself is known uh, also for its art department. So we mix art in, with computing. In computing, we come from a perspective of computer graphics, vision, and computer games, uh, together with the science of uh, molecular biology. And uh, we also have a strong take on uh, including perception. And there's also an excellent uh, Department of Psychology at Goldsmith. Um, and yesterday I was very happy uh, by the keynote mentioning, uh, for example, looking back at Gestalt theory and these uh, higher level ideas of visual perception. So the art feeds um, uh, the, uh, regularly in, into the project. This is an example from Sir William Latham of one of his more recent uh, piece uh, called Mutator 2, I believe. So essentially, this is a, an area where you look at molecular-like forms. Uh, over the years, uh, Latham has developed a sophisticated uh, software interface, mainly with uh, Stephen Toth from IBM Research Labs, and uh, mix mixing um, ideas from uh, evolution and uh, evo evolutionary computations. Uh, the artist is able, able to produce interesting new uh, visualizations such as these. These are 3D here. Uh, I'm just showing you a snapshot. So FoldSynth itself uh, is a project where we explore complex dynamic forms. Uh, so all these words I think are, are important here. Uh, and you'll see that it's uh, the dynamic side comes to play. Uh, we focus on the area of molecular strands for, for now. And in particular, in the last couple of years, we've looked at proteins. But what you've seen today could be extended to RNA or other such strands. So classical view, uh, we will get within our interface uh, and we mix it here. Here is a more recent project, uh, Professor Stumberg mentioned yesterday, BioBlocks, where we look at protein docking and here we are seeing a view on an intermediate medial surface that guides uh, the docking. So I mentioned already a tension between 2D and 3D. We're really starting with one-dimensional data, sequencing, um, and then we, uh, we can think of how to use 2D. Uh, humans are very good at uh, recognizing patterns in 2D. Uh, we are interested in 3D because it relates to closer to the reality of the molecules. We also have the dimension of time uh, to be even closer to the reality, and this is part of our project. And there are more dimensions because we want to bring in forces, different simu uh, simulations, uh, how do you portray that in an uh, interaction? Uh, so one of the uh, uh, development in the recent years, especially in the area of computer game technology, is what's called physics. So this, this usually physics in the case of games is how to optimize uh, Newtonian-like physics, so things like collision detection in real time. FoldSynth uh, current interface looks more or less like this, and you'll see a little more shortly about it. So you have um, a space which is in tension between a 2D distance ma matrix, which is what you see at the bottom, this triangle. It's actually half the distance map because it's a symmetric map, so we don't really need to see the rest of it. Uh, and floating above is the 3D uh, structures uh, we can interact with. And you are able to interact either in the 3D world or the 2D world. Whatever you do on a 3D structure is reflected at the bottom of the, on the map and vice versa. And this should be uh, become clear later. I'll say more about the interface. 
there's also um, uh, multiplicity, multiplicity sorry, of modalities we are interested in exploring. Uh, more recently, we're looking a lot about uh, touch because we're using uh, sort of now common uh, inter uh, platforms like tablets. Uh, a bit further in, in the near future, I think we're going to see how we can replace some of that interaction with gestures as sensors uh, from computer vision become better and better and more affordable. There's the area of, of VR, virtual reality, whether this is uh, useful in this context we need to be explored. We've explored a little bit audio and I think there's a lot there to do, a lot more, and combinations of these. Uh, in terms of graphics, graphics has evolved a lot since the uh, 90s where it was mainly seen in uh, offline uh, processing for uh, Hollywood movies. In the, in the two ta year 2000s, uh, it started to become uh, uh, state of the art in interactions and graphics and now this is coming to us in, in the research world. Uh, the other thing is that the, these technologies are more or less available on all the platforms you can think of from your phone to your um, supercomputer. And this provides uh, for uh, richer uh, experiences. We have uh, another tension in this, this project is the, all the possibilities now we can access and try to make available to the researcher or the user. Um, and I'll, I'll say more later. We also have the problem of uh, parameters and menus and how do you make that available to a, a user in a not to this disturbing way. Uh, this is a challenge. More, again, more recently, we are sort of using some of the experience of Holcim to f uh, feed into our next big project, uh, uh, BioBlocks. So here you see a take from Holcim. It doesn't mean that that's what we were using in the gamification project of BioBlocks. <coughs> where you see that we have combined this 2D matrix idea of a, tri a big triangle at the bottom that you could touch put your hands into and how it reflects with here two molecules, their intermediate medial guiding surface and the rectangular area in, in the top of the triangle represents the uh, interactions between the two molecules so we preserve the uh, triangular overall shape. Yes, showtime. So let me, let me show you uh, a little bit about how it looks and at the poster session we're still running at the meeting. Uh, I'm happy to uh, have you play with the actual software interactively. So we, we combine uh, the main ways of visualizing uh, molecules these days. We have uh, water flow and bombarding uh, simulations as well. We explore some perhaps innovative um, visualization. You saw uh, how to represent time as the molecule moves in space, generates these fancy surfaces. So this is the idea of the distance map. You really need only half. Uh, it can sit sort of at the bottom of the screen. You can visualize it in different ways. For example, a height map. Uh, all the actions you take in, again, either in the 3D world or the 2D world are connected. So you can choose where you interact. In the context of Holcim's project so far, we've put everything together in one platform, our laptop or PC. But you can imagine that this, uh, this represent these representations could be separated. So you have, for example, the matrix on a touch surface or gestures uh, driven by gestures and uh, the 3D visualization shown on the headset, for example. We can remove the constraints and then refold the molecule, which is illustrated here, interactively. And here what we're doing is we're revealing uh, the constraints that were uh, imposed because we know the, stru the target structure. Uh, we use simple physics from previous project, the Imperial uh, Coin Model by Benjamin Jeffries. Here uh, a similar process but uh, with different types of visualization. Color uh, represents how far you are from the, the target, the more red it is. Uh, then we're exploring the interface as we go, uh, the, the possibilities. So here's an interesting way to uh, use uh, the interface in sort of educational purpose where you can reveal uh, the one-dimensional nature of the molecule by traversing uh, the distance matrix. There's other 
things we can do with the uh, platform because it is interactive. We can create our own molecules. So here you, ha you have a user who's putting uh, specific constraints in the, uh, this, the 2D world and is visually informed uh, by his action of how it reflects in the 3D world. So again, this would be perhaps more relevant for educational purposes. So it, it, what you saw previously was a bit free, uh, free type of design, and here it's a uh, constraint of our, uh, about secondary structures, so we're here using the interface to create molecular-like uh, believable results. And we have these other ways to interact with the, the platform. So here, the uh, rectangular area allows you uh, at frame rate to remove the constraints or reveal them again so you can see the uh, effects of that. And we even have uh, the possibility to create uh, non-natural uh, forms with this uh, device. So, going a bit uh, ahead of time. So again, the, the more recent work is in exploring uh, the current docking of proteins and fault synth project, all the project is feeding into the new project, giving us some insights on where to take uh, the new project next. <coughs> so is this uh, really what we need? Uh, probably a, a good question to have at this, this point. So I, I see Folkson as an explorative and playful uh, platform. Uh, essentially, we're testing the technology, what is available out there, for example, from the computer games technology that could be imported in our world of uh, scientific visualizations. And uh, so this is one uh, reason for uh, this project. Another big area, I think, of this kind of um, uh, activity is in the, in the area of education and engage uh, with students or younger um, people in, in the area of uh, bioscience and visualization of science in general. And, and for us researchers, whether you're coming from the computer science or design area or in, uh, bi from biology, uh, I think it's also a, a good platform to test ideas. By the way, this is all implemented in Java and will run on, uh, again, essentially in the platform you're familiar with. Um, and it, uh, just to re-emphasize the point of uh, where I see this uh, false pro project perhaps moving in the near future in, in the area of uh, education and engaging into the uh, science of uh, molecular visualization. So, for example, uh, designing very simple structure initially to learn about, for example, secondary structure and the relationship between distance map and uh, 3D uh, visualization. So what's next for this project? In the uh, essentially beginning of 2015, uh, our uh, immediate plan is to release a free version, uh, free here in quotation mark because nothing is really free, so uh, we don't promise that it will be bug free, for example. Uh, and what we hope also to do is to uh, put it into a form which allows other people to contribute to the project in the form of little plugins, and these are the main areas we've identified so far where we expect uh, to get some uh, feedback from uh, the outside world into the project. So I'm interested in people coming up with puzzles. Uh, and after that, also probably in 2015, we would like to move uh, the work we've done to other uh, surfaces or interfaces. So I mentioned before uh, touch base uh, versus uh, visual and uh, interface. And uh, the team is a combination of uh, people from Imperial uh, on the Professor Sternberg guidance and people at Goldsmith, myself, and William Layton, uh, Stephen Todd from ex IBM researcher, and his son Peter Todd, I played a big role as well. Thank you very much. Thank you.